Phil, it's good to see you. Yeah, you're doing good to see you. Phil, I haven't seen you in a long time, but I've been writing about this guy for like 10, 15, maybe 10 years, writing about the website. How many Dimmick posts have we had over the years? It would be amazing. Have you ever seen the website? I haven't, no. I, it's I amazing. I, I started to go out today and just type in Michael Dimmick and so many posts I could break up about Michael back in the day. <laughs> Going back in the day, all the way back to Northwest Gopher back in the old, old days. So I actually went to Westland. Westland, yeah, but yeah. before Westland, you were headed to Northwest. I, yeah, 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 so I was. I went to Cronodal Middle Because Northwest school. wanted you the next thing you're at Westland. Yeah, yeah, so that, that, that was kind of the deal. I was in Cronodal, uh, played there for a year, and then I was on my way to Northwest, and then I made the decision midway through the summer. I was like, yeah, I'm going to give Westland a chance. they got a pretty good program, pretty good coach. That's Coach Scott Davis? Yes, Coach uh, Scott Davis is there when I was there, and he's still there. He's a man. Yeah, he, he, he did uh, had a pretty good opportunity with him, and he kind of pushed us through. We won a state championship my senior year, which is pretty special. The first one in the, in the school history, so yeah. And they've had a few since then, I guess. They have. They, I think they've had two or three since then. Who were with? Was Wes Wren when you were there? Wes Wren was there, yeah. I thought he was. He so went I, to the Citadel and yep. there. He was a good ball player back played in the day. Played with Wes. Played with uh, Will for two played years. Played with Will Myers. Yep. Another good name there played as well. Played with uh, Michael Rodenberg. He played over at High Point. Um, so it, it's quite a little uh, alumni group we've got going on from there. And Michael Dibbett, tell us where you are today as far as your professional baseball goes. Right now I'm playing with San Diego Padres. I finished up in uh, AAA last year with Did them. you go against the Round Rock Express last year at all? I, I didn't get a chance to throw them, but uh, I remember putting something on the website. You were doing pretty well because you had worked your way toward Triple A, yep. and the, the the city you're with again there, El Paso Chihuahuas. Chihuahuas. Ah, that's where I remember that name <laughs> on the website for sure. The Chihuahuas. Then you had some good runs there last year. Yeah, yeah. So I, I had a pretty good year with with El Paso. Like I said, I got caught up from Double A, and, and things like I said this year they started really clicking for me. Everything you're fortunate because a lot of the guys that get into it, so many guys that got into it, but we knew over the years through the area of baseball, a lot of those guys are not there anymore. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Wes Wren, well, he was there. Wes told me about some days he spent on the, in the old uh, dugout on those uh, uh, exhibition baseball yep. games in the preseason. And, yep. and guys like uh, Clint Moore. Clint was, yep. was San, he was with San he Diego. He was San Diego as well. It's crazy, yeah. man, because Clint was there and there. Clint's had a baseball. Yep. Corey Kimber's too. Remember Corey? Corey Kimber, he's there as well, I believe. Yeah, yeah he is. He, 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 he was uh, a notch two bully, you maybe last year yeah, out of Dudley he, High School. He got, he got hurt last year. Yeah, he did. He had some Tommy John war done and yep. sat out a year. Yep, so yeah. he, he sat out a year, and like I said, with uh, I've been fortunate enough to stay healthy through him. Entire career. And, and you're forced to still be there too. Yeah, but and that's the main thing. I count my blessings and thank God oh, every man, day. Oh man, because I mean, that's the main thing. Is it's it's hard struggle. to stay yeah. in there because so many guys are no longer out there. And you think about these guys. You know, when they're younger, that guy's gonna be in baseball the rest of his life. Yeah. But not the case. A guy like Will Myers, you're in the same organization with Will. Yep. And, and Will, he, I mean, Will's had huge success. But huge boy, success. He's yeah. seen some tough times too, injury wise. He he's, he's been up and down injury wise, and that's the main thing. Is is and I, I was telling him not earlier is that if he can just stay healthy. That's almost half the battle, you, and, and really just being able to fight your way through small little nagging injuries that can kind of uh, decline whether your performance up and down, and, that, and that's the main thing is kind of tr keep out of the way. Any idea what your record might be over the course of your professional career? Do you keep up with that anymore? Uh, I know it's pretty good, I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. I know. Um, Working as a starter or a reliever these days? Reliever these days. Yeah, yes, that's sir. a change too, isn't it? Uh, it? It was. I started my first two years in college, and like I said, I liked it. At then, Wake Forest. Yes, sir, at yeah. Wake Forest. Mm -hmm. And then um, from then on, uh, my, my coach came to me uh, before I started my junior year, and I, I was. Was I that was, Coach Tom Walter? Tom Walter, yes, sir. Excellent, man. Do Tom Walter back in? He used to work with the old Greensboro Bats baseball team. I remember he actually told me about. He that. told the story. He was like yeah. a, he was like an advertising sale. Yeah, he worked see, in the front office. Tom right. Walter <laughs> worked in the old stadium downtown. I, was, I think that was one of his first jobs right out of college, I believe. Fairly close, I yeah. think so. Yeah, but he he. I mean, where he is now, this guy, he paid his dues. He, he's great. He, he's unbelievable. Like I said, when, when when he came on board after my freshman year, he called me and he said, "Hey, I got the job. I'm gonna call you and, and, and kind of welcome you and whatnot." And, and, and like, from, from that point on, I never looked back. And I, I really never doubted anything you said to me. Because you had, when you were younger, you dominated. You had it pretty smooth. Sometimes I'm just like, Michael Demons got the feeling of entitlement. I can do anything. <laughs> but as you got further and deeper into this, and you found out this is pretty darn tough. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. And like you said, early on I had a sense of entitlement. And, mm -hmm. But it was almost like inside I kept that you're still second place. And, and that, that's kind of Is that thing. what drove you? Yeah, it really did. And that, that continued on. I never really took my foot off the gas pedal. It's a good and, thing you didn't because you could have yeah. slipped on that this baseball career and said, I did what I did. I got the Michael Demick name. And like myself, Enad, Wyatt, other people, they would, they would always remember you from baseball, but yeah. you're going to do a little bit more. Yeah. 
you got to get to the top. Yeah, exactly. And that's the main thing that's kind of been fueling my fire. And like I said, and, and, and also, it, 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 it really stuck a burn in my butt when, um, I mean, when, when I got, I, I didn't get picked up after my junior year. I had, I had lights out stuff, and I was, I was kind of pissed off about it. And then after my senior year, I got picked up for a senior sign, late, late rounder. And I remember the rounds passing by, my agent saying, hey, you should be going this mm, round, this mm, round. And I remember day after day, and I'm wondering, I'm saying, is this really meant to be? And then finally got the call. I said, Houston Astros, give me a chance. And I said, I'm going to show everybody wrong. Yeah. And then that's the kind of, it's, it's, it's really kind of fueled my passion for the past few years. Is cause and you got to develop that thing, too. I'm not sure I'm going to stick with, but I'm going to stick with it until I stick with somebody. Yeah. you got to stay with it because you may have to move around. Yes. Look at Will. I mean, he's been like with Tampa Bay. He's been like with Kansas City. Yep. Padres, and they got the Padres. They thought it was be perfect. It didn't work out quite that way. Yeah. But like yourself, you got to keep sticking until you get to that final run right. on the ladder to the top. And then that's the main thing is, is I've kind of stuck with it the entire time. And, and he, whether it's been up and down, I know it's, it's been a tough, uh, vicious cycle for me. Um, but that's the main thing, as I said. What's impressed you the most about this professional baseball and your career in it? What's impressed you most about being a professional baseball? Uh, I mean, there's a lot of perks to being in it. Like I said, it's, it's a great being able to go out and play a game every day. Um, I'm very fortunate to have the opportunity, and, and really, that, that, and that's, it's, that, that's what it breaks down to for the most part is that every day I get to wake up and play a kid's game every day. And, and that, that's what I really enjoyed and, and really look forward to whenever I go out to the park. We remember your days back, even all the way back to the prolific power. Remember that team, <laughs> yeah, Justin Smith team I back do, in the day? I do, yeah. yeah, yeah. Remember Matt Nedisham? Was Matt on that Matt, team? Matt Nedisham was on the team. Good yes, man sir. back yeah. in the day. So he, was, good people back he was. He was definitely. That was also a fun team when we got to travel around. We went out to. Uh, I'm trying to think, we, we went all, we went to California for that team, I believe. So we, we kind of traveled from coast to coast, but it's always fun to kind of relish back in old times, playing with old teammates, kids that used to think that this guy was the man, and then yeah. it's kind of it, it really was fun times thinking about there. What kept you going the whole time? You talked about that burr on your side, there in your backside, sticking. What kept you going the whole way through? I got to stick this. Thing. I got to just got to keep going because so many people get them keep falling by the wayside. Yeah, well, for, you want to prove people wrong too, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I do. And Michael I really Dimmick do. can't make it. He's He's got it made at home. He's got, exactly. it, he's got it laid out for and, him. Everyone always said I was too small, yeah. it, didn't throw hard enough, and, 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 and kind of that, that way. And, and for me, it's always been my competitive nature, nature is just, its I think it's unlike anyone else I've ever met. What's your mindset now knowing you're a reliever? You think about time. When do you, when you think you're going to be coming to the game, and what are you thinking about when you get ready to get in that game? No, normally, kind of how I get prepared for that situation, I, I kind of I can look at the scoreboard and say, it's kind of close. I, I, I might get kind of heated up. And from then on, probably about the third end, I'm starting to get my mind mentally set that, hey, this is the guys you're going to face. This is who you want to prepare against. And kind of I'll go over the lineup and say, if I face this guy with second and third, how am I going to face him? Are you I, thinking I'm facing three guys, six guys, or what do you think? No, normally for me, being a one to two inning guy, I'm, I'm thinking, obviously, I'm going to think. I'm six. Yeah, and, and that's what my mindset is. I'm, I'm going six. And then when I go one, I kind of shut down and, and kind of relax a little bit. But while I'm up there, I'm geared up to face six. That, yeah. That's how many I want to think, because I don't want to go in and say, well, facing six batters, what, what do I do? Does I it mess you up in guy. case your guy, your starting guy, he's supposed to go five, he goes three and a half. Hey, Michael, <laughs> we need you now. Get ready. You're on that bullpen bench down that way. Somebody tips the cap or gives that nod, tells you to get ready. Does that change how you do that, things? I mean, that, that, that's kind of a fun thing. You, you never want to be caught off by surprise for, in, in, in that, that type of situation. Obviously, every ideal situation, you want your starter to go seven, mm -hmm. and you go bullpen one, two. Right. But, uh, I mean, uh, with those kind of situations, everyone's scrambling, and, and that's the time when you got to say, just – Let's just go. And you kind of feel on a certain <laughs> day, you kind of feel like this pretty well could be my day. It's, yeah. it's either one or two days. If it goes beyond one or two days, or maybe three days, you're thinking. Usually I'm you know. saying I'm, I'm getting my kind of juices flowing. I want to get get that competitive nature once to get back out there and really kind of fight. And that's the main thing. I can kind of tell when it's been two or three days. We ask feel. all the kids. We have a lot of kids. have adults. Hunter Ridge here last. Remember yeah. Hunter back in the day. Yes, he's going to come in. What's been the best baseball day of your life? You had that one game during the course of your career and said, man, if I could go do that again, I would do that right now and live it the same exact way again. I don't think I've lived it yet, I'll be honest. No, it's <laughs> tough. It's out there. I, I think, uh, like I said, I think the, the, the potential for my career is still going, and I don't think I've quite reached the peak where I want to be. I, I don't think I can really live, relive a, an Audi in a moment where I said that was the best night of my career. Because, like I said, I, I don't think it's there yet. I don't you don't think wanna, I've hit in it. fact, you don't want to live off that anyway. You want to keep no. pushing towards that yeah. higher level, that higher yeah. mark. And that's what I continue to do is, is always people can always look back at what they've done and say, I've done this, I've done this, I was All-State, I was All-ACC, I was Conference Player of the Year. Really Did you have me, all those? 
I maybe I maybe I did. I don't know. All ACC? I did. Yeah. Yeah. Pitcher of the year? I was. Yes. For your team or for the conference? Uh, for the conference, I believe. ACC pitcher of the year, All ACC. I had to feel pretty good. I believe. Yeah, it was, it was all right. But like I said, it, it, it's it's easy to kind of get stuck on those uh, accolades and just say, yeah, I'm done. But for me, like I said, I've always had that spur on my side, being able to say that you're, you're not six four. You're you're not this. How tall big, are you? I'm six one. How much do you weigh? Two twelve. Pretty strong size there. Pretty strong it's frame. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and when you tell those guys you went into at San Diego, you might tell those guys, well, I was ACC Pitcher of the Year. I was South the, the uh, All-ACC. And said, what'd you do yesterday? Exactly. Yeah. Or actually, what'd you do today? What'd you do this morning? Yeah. And, and see, that, that, that's where it kind of, it, it really stems from. And that's what, it's, it's easy for guys to get caught up in that type of hype. Who helped you get where you are this mind? Because you, did you develop this mindset on your own? Or you got some encouragement? You got like a, maybe a train somebody pushing you along out there. Who, who's the helper? <laughs> Well, here. like I said, I've had a few people really pushing behind me. Like my, for one, my father, he's always pushing me. Um, I like my trainer, Carmine Pagano's, also really kind of stuck behind me throughout all these years, and really kind of helped me, helped me since in his old Bell South days when he was over in uh, in Burlington. I remember that, yeah. And, and when it was Health South, so I'm sorry. And then so I mean, he's been backing me up. And you look at Carmine's facility, you say. You go back in, you open the glass door, and this is it. It's not anything huge, but look at the guys he turns out. The Seeger kid, I guess two Seegers yep. maybe with Seattle, they all signed for like went through there. major money, like huge money. They yep. trained with Carmine in the all season, coming from yep. down around Concord up here. And see, that's the thing is you, you, you may look at the facilities and say, well, this isn't much, but it, really, if you look at it, it's everything you need. Look what it, comes out of it, yeah. And it's, it's really kind of the, the, the you really have to vote kind of the work ethic he drives, and he, he'll, he'll push you to the end. I'm telling you whether you're, you're throwing up, you're bleeding, sweating, whatever. That's good to know. That's what you want to because yeah. that's what you need going in. You <laughs> yeah, have to is. have that. It is, and he, he's really tough at driving for us. It helps, you, it helps push any athlete, whether it's me, whether a high school kid, middle school kid. We talked to Hunter Ridge about this last week. Look at the old guy, Mitch Adkins, who's yep. still doing a trade. Yep. If he can make that guy go, and uh, yeah, you might have a shot to do that same thing. Yeah, and so Mitch is actually, he's still playing, and he's still training with us as well. And he's still, he's a prime example. The guy's 30 years old, and he's in better shape than probably hardly anyone I know. Mm. And that's the main thing is he, he's constantly keeping his, his game uh, for the next level. You're not doing baseball. You're doing some other stuff, too. So you're not doing baseball that day. you got some clinics and things. Well, I, did you get that clinic in back when he had that huge snow? Did I, did. You did? I did. You did? Yeah, that I did. That Saturday night? Yep. So I actually, I, I'm pretty fortunate wow. to have a, a good little base. And, and so mm. I've been doing clinics on my own. I've been doing lessons. So you got that. That day it snowed, you still got that baby Yeah, in. I did. So wow. it's, it's, Have a good turnout? I did. I did. I, I, I had the turnout I wanted. Yeah, okay. And, and that's the thing. I've been doing clinics, and I also coach a 13U baseball team hmm. right now. So they're, 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 they're Where's that based out of? They're, they're based out of Greensboro. Center? Yeah. They're, it's TBC a, team? Carolina Kong, actually. Carolina Kong. Carolina Kong. So it's um, it's it's actually turned out to be a fun little – I started it, uh, I guess, a year and a half ago in uh, 2013, I believe. And then so I started doing that, and then it's it's really kind of progressed. They, they were ranked uh, – preseason ranked number five in the country in the wow. And it, it's really – Most I, of these I kids, Greensboro it. kids? Or how yeah, they are. They're, 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 they're Greensboro, went to Salem, and we, we've got a few traveling kids from all over the place. And Again, you said it's based out of the batting center? Yeah. And, and so we'll, we'll, we'll practice there, and then so we kind of practice all over the place, being the kids are kind of differently locally, not based. Mm -hmm. And um, But like I said, with that team, it's really turned out to be a fun little activity I can do. And, and if they want to get involved in a team like that, they just go through you through the batting center, right? Yeah, well, normally they, they can just contact me directly. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've got two, two other coaches on staff, and they, they can contact them as well. Who are those guys? Uh, Chris Cox and then um, AJ Lewis. I believe that they, they can contact him as well. What's um, your contact information? Let's leave it to one person's kind. What's your contact information? My contact? Yes. Personally, you can probably just reach me on my Facebook. Yeah. Facebook or, or Twitter uh, Twitter account. So What's your Twitter handle, Nick? I think it's... I don't think it's changed. I think it's Slim Jim Two Three. Slim Jim Two Three on Dim. Twitter. Slim Dim, <laughs> not yeah. Slim Jim Two Twelve. He goes Slim Dim. Slim Dim Two Two Three. Two, yes, three. sir. Yeah. So Where's the Two Three come from? Uniform number? I, I think it was a uniform number a while ago, but yeah, it was something loosely based, and it's just hung on. I haven't changed it in years since. Are I've you doing it, any so. training now? Most of the teams, their practices have all begun. So any training going on now? Yeah, but I mean, like I said, I, I never really. Uh, took my foot off the gas once mm -hmm. I finished up. But I've been training since September, and it's usually it's a three to five day week type regimen, and it's really kind of continued on. Um, 
with that. And I think I'm in the best shape of my life right now. And like I said, I'm ready to go spring training, ready to uh, really take off. And you're training other people too at the same time? You're still doing some uh, work yeah, at the yeah. batting center? Yeah, yeah. Those guys? I'll, do, I'll do some lessons over there. Um, and so I'll, I'll, a few kids I'll teach and I'll do stuff kind of locally. But yeah, for most stuff, I will do stuff in my, uh, the Greensboro Batting Center. And that, that, like I said, that's a good space just being it's everyone runs it. And that, yeah. that's the main thing is, is you really think about it. It's, it's, I've been going to it since I was little, and then it, it, it really continues on the trait. And, and that's, that's the neat thing about it is being able to have that type of well-run business that you've got generation of kids coming in. GBC is the place to be. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Where were you at when you got going? Was it Northwest, Gopher, Colfax, Stokesdale, Summerfield, Oak Ridge? Where'd you play first? I believe the first, where I first started playing was that local YMCA off for college. Really? So I started up there and then they said, hey, you should probably go play in Pleasant Garden. So I started playing Pleasant you Garden. You the Pleasant Garden. Yeah. A lot and of so, kids did. Yeah. And so that, well, I was really fortunate to have that, that group I played with was Clint Moore, Dusty Shutt, uh, Austin Moyer, wow. and Cameron Cockman, Austin Venable, and it's so like all those guys, I can name name after Who name. Who was the big kid from Northwest that went down there? Remember the real big muscular kid? Uh, which one was that? Was it Nick Rogers? There you go. Yeah, there you yeah, go. So yeah. I, remember, I remember playing with Nick, and yeah. like I said, it's I've been very fortunate enough to have kind of the kids I played with were super competitive, and, and it kind of made me want to play in their same level, if not better. What do you tell the kid who's trying to make it today? Because you, you're very close. You've been to AAA last year, trying to get to the top this year, and in the future. What do you tell the kid who's trying to make it? Uh, he may be on his way, but uh, trying to get closer. I mean, obviously, the, the main thing I preach is, I mean, you, you can look at your body type. You can look at how tall, how hard you throw, and et cetera but you really can't measure what's inside of you. And so that, that's the main thing that really drives me is I've always had a, 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 a fire inside me to push past beyond what's expected. You kept finding more inside of you. Were you kind of surprised how much you had in you? No, I, I really wasn't. Like I said, I, I think it, it, in my mental stability, I think it's one of the stronger points in my career. I think uh, I'll find little things to kind of really push me and, and, and really motivate me. Like it's we good said. you found it because you could have been satisfied with what you had going <laughs> yeah. on. You did so well. You had a lot of talent, did so many different things. You could have just reset stage where I'm pretty good. Yeah. I'm going to keep saying where I'm at, being this good, and maybe not got better. Yeah, and then I think that's where some kid, it, it, it kind of falters kids is being so good so young. Was there ever a time when a light went off, something just hit you? I, gotta, I can't just be like I am. I've got to get better and better and better. And I think every day it, it kind of hit me. And that's the main thing that we talked about. And, and whether I was growing up, I, I was never really satisfied with being, having this type of career, being, being this exclusive or whatnot. And, and it was always I wanted to be something better. I wanted to have a household name, something generationally that people can look and yeah. say, that was the guy. Michael yeah, Demick was the man. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'd like to hear. But, uh, and again, it's Dim. Give me that number again. For the Twitter handle? Oh, Slim Dim 23. Slim Dim 23. Yeah, that's I was Slim little. Dim I was tiny then. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> you were on Twitter early, too. <laughs> I can guarantee you. Michael Dimmick, thanks for talking with us. Thank you, Andy. I appreciate and again, it so much. Uh, the best way to contact you again is Slim Dim, Slim Dim 23. Slim Dim 23, yes, sir. Not, a, not any kind of email address, but the Slim Dim's the best way to go. Yeah, probably email is just my name, michael.dimmick23 at gmail.com. Always the 23. Yes, sir, yeah. Michael, good job. Andy, I appreciate it so much. Appreciate nice the good work. You too. Thank, Thank you. you. We got uh, Watt Smith next.